we run people through a validation. We analyze it. We collect the needs of what the customer is. And the customer in our case is typically a, a deputy general counsel, right? It could be the business. I want to know exactly what their needs are. And we use data to figure out root cause. We also do process analysis, as you're supposed to, and combine them together, but we are truly data driven. So now that we've engaged the SMEs, now that we've worked with the people directly, they have a buy-in, they have an automatic buy-in because they were participants and they provided some of the critical analysis that tells us what does the data mean. We use the data, right? We end up with very high levels of um, ROI. We also have a lot of reduced uh, rework because it's one and done. We did it right and we're, we move on to the next uh, project. So I'm going to turn it over to... Uh, Okay, thanks Michael. So I'm going to start with a really simple example of how we applied these concepts. A few years ago, we had a situation in our legal department where various teams were going under budget, over budget, no, no real coordination, a lot of surprises. And um, while going over budget is obviously a bad thing, significantly going under budget is not a great thing either because if your company is like ours, once the quarter is over and that money's unspent, it doesn't roll over. So you've got a permanent loss of resource when that occurs. So one of the first tasks that my boss gave me when I was placed into this role a little over three years ago was to stop the surprises. So we walked through this process. We actually had some Six Sigma Black Belt people come work with us, got in a conference room. We kept it pretty light touch. But we walked through all of the different processes and what we found is we had a lot of different people doing things differently and not really understanding the consequence of their actions in many cases. So we kind of tore the processes apart, put them back together, came up with something that was a little bit more consistent and more predictable. We also made it a point to really understand what were the areas of flexibility, what could we push out, what could we pull up, what were the areas of risk? Where were we potentially subject to the most surprises where we could kind of buffer for those? And then we gave the team a metric or a goal. It made them very nervous. Uh, not, not everyone likes having a very measurable target. But our goal was that every single quarter, we would have 99% forecast accuracy. Again, not everybody was happy about that. But we did it the first quarter and we did it every quarter after that. Now you may be wondering why our budget dropped so pre precipitously, and that was when we separated. So we had to take the HP budget for the legal department, carve it into two new budgets for two new companies, and this was our share of the pie. We were pretty nervous when that happened because we had muscle memory as HP, didn't really know how easy or difficult it was going to be to apply those same concepts to a brand new, basically we were a $50 billion startup. But the process worked, and we did another repeat performance. For over three years now, every single quarter, we have been above 99% utilization. I just talked to one of my ops managers today. We just finished our second fiscal quarter. We came in at 99.5% of budget, and we just we do it very predictably now. So that was kind of job one. That was basically the first step in our metrics journey. 